Hello, Professor Didi here. Today I am going to talk about Civil Liberties, Chapter 4 of the Tax for the Political Science course, Introduction to Political Science. Civil Liberties are a very important thing, sometimes something we take for granted, but at the same time, sometimes we confuse Civil Liberties with the expression Civil Rights. Civil Liberties, the rights of people to do, and the important thing is the rights of people to do or say things without government interference. Civil liberties depend on the structure and action of the government for enforcement. The government declares the restrictions on individuals' liberties for the good of the community. Civil rights are rights that the government must safeguard to prevent discrimination against individuals based on arbitrary characteristics such as race, gender, sex, religion, etc. The government must ensure that each person is treated equally. Civil rights depends on the structure and actions of the government for enforcement. When you think about civil liberties, you can also think about something the text discussed, and that is community. Community is a group of people with shared interests and values, and this is what makes community strong or weak, divided or united. And when we think about the freedom of the individual, you have freedoms, but you don't have the right to yell fire in a crowded theater. Every country guarantees certain civil liberties to its people, but how governments interpret those liberties vary widely. A lot of totalitarian countries guarantee freedom of speech, as long as you don't criticize the government. Countries like North Korea and Saudi Arabia guarantee certain freedoms, but if you try to act on those freedoms, the government can also say, we've got the right to arrest you because you're endangering society. When we think about these issues, sometimes they can get complex. Civil liberties and civil rights at times fall under the aspect of human rights. And human rights are very important in our society. The United Nations, in one of its founding documents, talked about the principle of human rights and how important it was for all people in the world to have those fundamental rights. When we think about rights in our country and civil liberties, we also think about the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. And when we break those down a little bit, the First Amendment prohibits restrictions against the free exercise of religion and prohibits government from taking any action respecting the establishment of religion or infringing on free speech, guarantees the right to peacefully assemble and petition the government for redress of grievances. There's a rights in the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms. The rights of the Fourth Amendment against unreasonable searches and seizures. Rights are a very important thing in our society. And when we think about rights at times, it's easy to take rights for granted unless you fear losing your rights. The Constitution and individual liberties is also very important. In Chapter 2 of the text, it discusses a lot about this in relation to political behavior is human behavior. Constitutions are a blueprint and a framework for society. It enunciates the rights citizens have and what citizens can and cannot do. Rights are a very important thing, something, as I mentioned before, citizens have the ability to take for granted. Just a few years ago, people took for granted the right for women to choose until the Supreme Court said abortion rights can be restricted. John Stuart Mill talked about rights. And in his publication on liberty, he talked about individual rights citizens have as far as what they can do, but the aspect of responsibility for citizens as far as enunciating those rights and putting those rights in the actions. Community, as I said before, is an important aspect of rights. And civil liberties get tricky, especially if you want to think about the COVID era. For people who wanted to wear a mask, there were other people that said, you're infringing on my liberty. I can take care of myself. Some of those people unfortunately got sick and ended up dying. You often have to balance your rights with the rights of the individual. You may feel you have a right to free speech, but you don't have a right to harm individuals with your speech. Due process is also an important aspect when we think about rights. And when we think about due process, it's the part of the law that basically people don't think much about. The right of basically being processed in a court system, 
the right to be told your rights, the right to go through a grand jury, the right to have a trial of a jury of your peers. At times we take for granted due process rights. The police just can't arrest you and throw you in jail and not tell you why, because then you can issue a writ of habeas corpus to be told what your rights are. And at times we take for granted the aspect of due process, the ability to ask for an attorney to represent you in a court, the right to be told what your rights are, the Miranda warning, all part of that. One of the biggest aspects of rights deals with the right to privacy, self-determination, freedom of ideas. The Fourth Amendment talks about the right to privacy without using the word privacy. The case Griswold versus Connecticut enunciated the right to privacy of people in their homes dealing with the issue of birth control. And we often at times take that right of privacy for granted. I talked before about John Stuart Mill. And one of the things he talked about was the aspect of freedom, civil liberties in this sense. He said, you have a right basically to go on a three day stupor and get drunk out of your mind, but you don't have the right to get drunk and then go out and drive a car. He said, basically, individuals have the right to harm themselves as long as they don't harm individual members of society. And the right to privacy is something that, I mentioned this with Griswold, Lawrence versus Texas and a variety of other Supreme Court cases dealt with looking at the issue of privacy and what people can and cannot do in their own lives. And mainly things that only they have to deal with personally, as long as you're not harming other individuals. And at times people believe privacy should be more limited. It's important to respect privacy and everyone's individual rights. When you think about privacy in general, people at times feel, well, I've got a right to do what I want to do. And that is a good thing. But as I said before, you don't have the right to harm other individuals. And people at times feel that, well, I'm in my own home. What difference does it make what I do? The problem is the long-term effects you do for your own privacy can harm yourself or other individuals long-term. In various countries, privacy rights can be somewhat limited. Think about the issue of same-sex marriage. In many continent places in Africa, the idea of same-sex marriage and same-sex sexual activities is considered illegal, often punishable by death. As I said, privacy in different parts of the world, civil liberties in different parts of the world are very, very different as far as what people can and cannot do. People often talk about privacy with free expression of ideas, being able to express ideas, and that's a very important thing. As I've said before, free expression is a good thing, but it often comes with responsibilities. The problem is for people who march in support of LBGTQ rights, there's other people that see that as an abomination and often protest against those people. It's their right to protest just as it's right of people to enunciate beliefs they have. But you also have to be respectful of people's beliefs one way or the other as far as what they choose to believe. A couple other things I want to mention as far as with this type of stuff as far as privacy. Different countries, as I said, different attitudes, especially towards women, which is unfortunate. I've mentioned before that if you want to judge and see any society that is successful or a failure, look at how well they do it educating young girls. Societies that educate women do much better as an overall society than a society that does not educate women. Making women a full partner in society is very important. In countries like Iran, they still require women to dress up in a variety of garb and wardrobe because that's what they believe is part of Islamic culture. And when you think about women in society, a hundred years ago, an idea of a woman going to college was extraordinary. But in 2009, for the first time, women outnumbered men on college campuses. When we think about civil liberties also, we can look at freedom of movement, being able to go different places and travel. And people take that for granted. There was a story one time I read where there was a gentleman who came to the United States from the Soviet Union. And 
someone asked him later, what was the biggest surprise you had coming to America? And he said, I moved about a year after I lived in America. I found a better apartment. And he said for the next several months, he kept waiting for the government to knock on his door, asking him why he moved. He just was so shocked because in Russia, when you moved, the government came and wanted to know, why are you moving? Are you unhappy with where you're living? What is the purpose of what you're doing? And he took that type of aspect almost for granted. Oh my God, I have the right to move and do these type of things. When we think about civil liberties, there's also the rights of the accused, the Miranda warning, telling people what your individual rights are, the right to counsel, which was established in the 1960s with the Gideon case. You are not automatically assumed guilty. One free piece of advice, the best way to avoid prison time is a good lawyer. People often object, I gotta pay this much for a lawyer, but a good lawyer lets you go home. And you do have a right to counsel. You have a right to a public defender, an attorney that you get paid for by the government. People often talk lastly about civil liberties, a right to a healthy environment. Being able to turn on tap water and knowing that the water's clean. Being able to fish for crabs and things like that in the water and knowing that the water is safe. The right to breathe clean air, knowing that their pollutants are not in the air harming people. Those are a lot of overall aspects when we think about civil liberties and civil rights. Things that are very important in our society. Throughout the course of the semester, I'll also discuss more about civil rights in various court cases and also talk about next time talking about political participation and public opinion. Most importantly of all, take care. Have a great day.